For more on this election, joining me now from Detroit is Saeed Khan. He is a lecturer at the Department of Near East and Asian Studies at Wayne State University. His focus is on Islamic and Middle East history, Islamic civilizations, and thought. Uh, former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton was at an event today, and she talked about this election. She said, quote, the Af Afghanistan election is under tremendous threat from the Taliban, threatening people not to vote, trying to continue to delegitimize the government of the country. She said she was hopeful that the election would continue and conclude in the outcome will create support for the new government. But that's a lot to ask for, isn't it? Talk to us about the challenges. Well, there's a few different challenges, Mike. I mean, on the one hand, uh, former uh, Secretary of State Clinton uh, is quite right. Uh, the uh, potential for violence with the Taliban, uh, a force which uh, holds exactly half of the country and not in just one location, is something to be uh, contended with, especially given their declaration that they do plan on disrupting the elections, uh, violence both at polling stations as well as with election rallies. But I would say there's an actually uh, a bigger issue going on here in Afghanistan, and that is a danger of disillusionment. Uh, the first elections that were held after 2001 were in 2004. Eighty-four uh, percent voter turnout. In 2009 and 2014, we have a drop to about 34 percent. And last year, when there were some elections, that dropped even farther into the low 30s. So the idea of voter turnout is going to be affected by the fear of violence by the Taliban but also the kind of disillusionment that they're facing when it comes to what they see as a government that simply isn't providing for them any level of stability, whether it is political or economic. That's a, a kind of a double whammy you're talking about. Is there anything they can do to ensure safety, though? Well, there are. I mean, here's a country of 35 million with about 9.6 million registered voters looking to uh, exercise their democratic rights. 75,000 security uh, forces are going to have to fan out to something like 23,000 uh, polling stations. Uh, that is a very tall order given the kinds of threats and uh, the challenges that are, they are facing. But yet there really is no choice. If the Afghans want to move toward uh, a better future, uh, then a democratic process will at least be uh, part of that equation. Now, at the same time, they're also going to have to contend with the prospect that this election will not provide a clear mandate as to whether uh, Ashraf Ghani wins a second term or uh, whether there's going to be some other pretenders uh, to that office. Right now, there is a very fragile uh, agreement uh, for governance between Ashraf Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah, the uh, runner-up in the 2014 election, something that was very delicately crafted by uh, Senator Clinton's uh, predecessor, Secretary John Kerry. And you talk about Ashraf Ghani, the incumbent. Uh, you mentioned the, one of the other candidates. I, I think there's about six vying for this top spot. Give us a snapshot of the issues, the candidates to watch. Well, there's actually about 15 major candidates that are running. The two top ones are uh, Ashraf Ghani, who is the, uh, the incumbent president. And then there's Abdullah Abdullah, who has this new post of being the CEO. Again, something created by this power-sharing agreement in uh, 2014. There's also the Afghan warlord uh, Gulbuddin Hekmatyar, who uh, was known as the uh, Butcher of Kabul. Uh, there's also Ahmed Wali Massoud, who is the uh, younger brother of the assassinated uh, commander um, uh, Ahmed uh, Shah Massoud. These are really the four people to go ahead and watch. As far as the issues go, they are the obvious uh, security, stability, and an improvement of the economy. At the same time, one of the other uh, variables is somebody who's not even running for office, uh, and that is the former president, uh, Hamid Karzai a very fierce critic of uh, Ashraf Ghani. And at the same time, what's interesting is that his cousin, uh, Jamil uh, uh, Karzai, has uh, been able to infiltrate the election observer pool to register 12,000 out of the 23,000 uh, election observers. This for the Afghan moderate party of 3,000, which has no plans of uh, running or uh, putting a candidate forward. And uh, even Karzai has said he's not even planning on voting. But he sees himself as a kingmaker, and it'll be interesting to see mm. how he then leverages that with influence to somebody either who is a viable opponent to Ghani 
or perhaps if there is a coalition uh, formed, that he will then try to extract certain concessions from Ashraf Ghani. That's going to be fascinating to watch. Of course, as I think you mentioned, this is the fourth presidential poll since the fall of the Taliban. That was back in 2001. Talk to me about the mindset of the electorate. You touched on this, the disillusionment. There was this new Gallup poll out, uh, showed a rather bleak attitude of the people there, not just about today, but the sense of hopelessness as they look to the future. How do you turn that around? Well, that is, of course, the, uh, the biggest challenge, isn't it? That, uh, on the one hand, uh, there is not even a, really a stagnancy of uh, the economic uh, conditions or the security conditions. There is uh, the, the very deeply embedded feeling of pessimism, that this is going to get worse. Uh, at the same time, attacks run unabated. Uh, even last week, there was, under the pretense of Afghan forces, an American drone attack which uh, killed 35 pine nut farmers. So the idea that uh, death and danger can come from the sky, irrespective of whether it is coming from the Taliban or from uh, government or government-supported forces, means that the kind of fatalism that the Afghan electorate now has will probably continue well beyond this election. Oh, wow. Uh, Saeed Khan joining us from Detroit. Thanks so much for your analysis.